My name is Ryan Page, and I'm an application specialist for Tecla Structures. Today in this video, we're going to be discussing some short and simple tips and tricks for use with modeling concrete and steel parts. The tips we'll cover in this video are pretty straightforward and are not meant to be revolutionary. Depending on how you operate inside Tecla, they may or may not already be familiar to you. The hope today is to provide users, new and experienced, exposure to some of the little things that may be known but not often spoken about when using Tecla structures. So with that, let's begin. If you're modeling foundations in Tecla, you're probably already familiar with the strip footing tool. And if you are, you've probably tried at one point to model a closed footing, only to realize that when you complete your shape, the last leg does not get created. Then you have to create that last leg by yourself and align, and if you have to alter that shape down the road, you have to edit two pieces as opposed to one. So naturally, the question comes up is, is there a workaround? Well, the answer is yes. You can actually model a closed footing or poly beam for that matter, as they're essentially the same tool. All you have to do is change how you start your footing or beam. The trick is to establish your starting point not at one of the corners, but along the length of one of the sides. Doing so allows you to complete the continuous shape just short of the starting point, and use direct modification to close the gap, leaving you with a closed continuous footing or polybeam. The Detailing Manager in Applications and Components is a tool that allows us to use other components and apply them quickly and on a larger scale. For cast-in-place users, you may be familiar with this tool, and if so, it's probably to place reinforcement in your concrete parts very quickly using some of our other components like mesh. The reality is, though, is that this tool can be used with many other components and place objects that only require a single object or a single click to apply the appropriate settings. So it's not just limited to rebar, but it can be used for inserts and lifters, couplers, and even speeding up the accurate calculation of formable area for our concrete. Users can establish a rule for each type of concrete part, such as beam, column, slab, and so on, and then specify the component, such as form face creator for parts, and then specify its corresponding setting and filter to isolate the part and apply the rule. This will greatly decrease the time it takes to apply these types of components if you have accurate settings and accurate filters. The Detailing Manager is flexible and can save you time when utilizing some of Tecla Structure's components, allowing you to get quantities and information out of the organizer that much faster. The Layout Point Applicator is great at enabling the creation of many layout points at once and provides settings that can be augmented by the user to align with their company's standards for grouping, naming, and so on. To that end, it is still a tool and some users may prefer or need to tweak things after points are created. This can be done via the Layout Manager, as we may know, and it's found on the Manage ribbon. By selecting a group of points, you can alter the group name, specify a new point prefix, and even a starting number to rename each layout point. Then, to get a better idea of which points are located where, without clicking each one in the layout manager, we can always turn on labels via the display settings for our view. the layout point names will become visible within our model. From here, if there's any adjustments that need to be made, we have the ability to move points via the layout manager and rename them again if so needed, ensuring that the points are always both in a sequential and logical order. If working with 2D references is part of your workflow, then you've no doubt noticed that most PDFs and even some 2D CAD files have masking around the text that makes it difficult or impossible to read. Before going through the trouble of adjusting your representation filters or sacrificing your reference rendering for the sake of a 2D document, make sure to check out the reference model pane. More often than not, a vector PDF and CAD files have layers that can be turned on and off independently. Simply double-click on the reference model in the pane and open up the layers drop-down. You may have to do a little trial and error if the layers are not named intelligently, but you should be able to find one that turns off the text background mask. 
This isn't 100% the case with every reference file, but it is more common than not, and worth taking a look before resulting to other methods to make your PDF or 2D CAD file more readable. Using Show Only Selected and Hide from the right-click contextual menu is a great way to get model objects temporarily out of the way. That being said, you're often left with a ghosted representation of hidden objects, or maybe even just some single lines. Sometimes this is okay, but other times they're still just in the way. You can actually have these completely disappear by simply holding down the Shift key before you select Show Only Selected or Hide for a much cleaner, isolated view of parts and objects. Simply just right-click and select Redraw View as usual to bring all objects back. On a related note, there's a way to get measurements out of your way when you're isolating or only showing certain objects without having to redraw your view and hide things again. To save yourself a step or two, you can go to the View ribbon and drop down the Redraw View command, but instead choose Erase Temporary Graphics. This will only refresh the view for things like dimensions from the Measure tool, but still keep your objects the way you had them. Keep in mind that although this command isn't part of the right-click contextual menu, you can still map it to a keyboard shortcut via the File menu, Settings, and then Keyboard Shortcuts. Another helpful function that the Shift key can provide is opening up dialog boxes for associated tools. Tools such as the Wall Layout or Formwork for Walls and Slabs are actually components that have an icon in our tool ribbons. These components have an associated dialog box that let us configure the tool and use it to its full potential. However, if you press and continue to hold the Shift key and then click the appropriate tool button from the ribbon, the dialog box will also open in addition to activating the tool itself. This allows you to skip a couple of clicks and get where you want to be in the first place before ever using the tool. Our final tip is all about selecting grips or control points of parts and objects. Whether you have direct modification turned on or not, it can become tedious to select multiple grips. To help with this, Tegla allows you to hold down the Alt key and then make a crossing window from left to right. By doing so, you will only select the grips that have fallen within the window you have specified. This allows for much easier and streamlined selection and manipulation of grips of your different objects and parts. This concludes our video on simple tips and tricks for cast and place concrete. Thank you for watching. For more information on the topics discussed in this video or for other topics, make sure to visit our Tecla User Assistance webpage for product guides, support articles, tutorials, and more.